Say that again. The critical drinker. The critical drinker. No, I have not. He's a Scottish uh, YouTube movie reviewer. He's got like 1.5 million subscribers and he's been going for, for a while as a YouTuber. And he reviews a lot of films and TV series. And they are, they are, it is pretty funny. It's, it's pretty funny, it's pretty accurate. And he talks about like the Rings of Power, House of Dragon, and he talks about Top Gun. And he says with, what's it called, Rings of Power, it was a t it's dreadful. I've not seen it, but I've from what I hear I from a lot it. of people, I hear it's absolutely dreadful. I have heard the same thing. It's there's a lot of pandering, like the the acting's poor, and whilst so, with Top Gun, <clears throat> it's it was just focused on being a good product rather than sort of pandering and trying to fit people's needs. And that that's the same case as saying with Disney, because it doesn't want to say anything too controversial with certain nations because it's yeah so there, there's a there's a lot of that going on um and you get uh you know you you mentioned the word pandering yeah that does happen in in it's in all industries it seems um and it gets a little frustrating frustrating with your entertainment because sometimes the end product is not exactly entertaining uh and and it's sort of like you have to ask that question well what are we going here what's the end goal of, of an entertainment company is it to be entertaining as entertaining as possible to put the best talent out there on the screen for everybody's enjoyment or is it to make everybody uh it, or is it to put an image of your company out there where no one can throw a stone at it because you've covered all your bases by being a part of a an all-inclusive culture you see what i'm saying so what what are you going for if you're disney what are you going for if you're netflix uh that image you have you have you have the image of you as a company that people really care about now they really do and uh, you don't want bad reviews of your company right in, in fact you'll even accept bad reviews of your product as long as people don't attack your company for being insensitive to the changing culture that we have not being inclusive you know and i guess that's the question is it comes down to the consumer what do you want you know, I know what I want. I want the best entertainment possible. I want to see the best comedy, the funniest comedy. I don't care about anything else. I don't care who the who the person is gender wise, who the person is with their ethnicity, where they're from, what their sexual orientation is. I just want the best entertainment. And I if I was at a company, I would go that way. Given the nature of the landscape, it's very competitive. Why wouldn't you want to put the best comedy material out there? But people, uh, companies make other choices based on other things. So, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not the one in charge of those places and those organizations. And so, you know, uh, but if I was, you know, I would I would question this this new approach. You know, I, I want I want to see the best product. That's all. I don't care. <laughs> I don't have any. It could be, you know, we have a television is, is skewing away from the elderly. They've been doing that for a long, long time. You hit a certain age and they don't even want you anymore. You, you know, so I, I would rather see an old ancient stand up comedian on a Netflix streaming special that had amazing jokes than a young, attractive comic with so so jokes. I live in a world now where that that doesn't happen, though. You know, Netflix, you, you know, Netflix just doesn't want your the old guy, <laughs> you know, of course, they let a few trickle in like Bill Burr and Tom Segura and Rogan. We could say these are old guys. Yeah, in a way. But there's a lot of other old comics that have been doing this for a long, long time that have amazing material and amazing jokes. No one's ever going to see them and know who they are because they'd rather put a young you know, hip comic with a mohawk on instead, you know, this is this is another trend. And uh, so I applaud anybody who eschews all of that pressure from the from society and only goes for um, the best talent. Whether it's writing, acting, stand up comedy, music. Uh, I applaud people that that do that because it's sad to say you actually take a risk when you do that. It's like, you know, when Seinfeld was doing 
uh, comedians in cars getting coffee. I loved it. Right. Watch the first season. He's 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 getting coffee with his funny friends. And then. He he someone reached out to him after season two or one or said and said, hey, man, you're going to get in trouble if you don't put more women on this show. And Seinfeld was like, what? I'm just putting my people I think are funny that are my friends. You know, and he he said, well, why should I have to fulfill some quota? This is my show. I have funny friends, whether they're men or not. Who gives a damn? They're funny. They're my friends. I'm putting them on the show. Eventually, he gave way to that pressure, I think, in a way, because then you saw a change in it. And um, not to say that the show got worse, but I didn't see a problem with where it was and where it was going because every episode was funny. Everyone on it was his funny friend, and I enjoyed it. So, you know, this this is a phenomenon that's been going on for a bit now, and I, I don't see a change anytime soon. It seems to just be getting... Um, it seems to be just going in the direction that I, I don't like, which is a watered down product, um, like entertainment wise, in my opinion. But the thing is, there was, there was a, do you watch boxing at all? Sadly, I, I'll only watch when Jake Paul's fighting some idiot. <laughs> That's all I, but I don't, I don't typically watch it, no. But there's a well, the heavyweight champion of the world, like Tyson Fury, like he's supposed to be the fight of the generation. Yeah, I know who he is. Yeah, I've um, seen one. I've seen one or two of his fights. He's a great boxer, and like, yeah, that fight of Wild is amazing, isn't it? The way he got up from that punch. Woof. Yep. But he got an interview of a podcast called True Geordie, and he question. He basically. Tyson Fury, heavyweight champion of the world, he says he's the people's champion and he's fighting Derek Chisora, who is a boxer who he's beat twice before and quite easily. But he's doing another fight now, which is not what people want. But he's. But the point of what I'm saying is, True George is a massive podcaster now and he, do, he can ask the questions and say what he wants to him because he's got such a big platform and because he's well supported and it doesn't matter what Tyson Fury hmm. does. Or so many people now can't do that because they're so scared of doing something wrong or. Yeah. Um, so this has created uh, another idea in your head as a, as a, as someone who produces content, right? Content producers now have to think about this extra thing. You say, well, whereas before I would imagine you just, you just think about how do I entertain my audience as best as I can. But now I have to think of, no, I have to not only entertain my audience, but I have to I have to play it really safe so that people that aren't even my audience won't throw stones at me and accuse me of being, uh, you know, someone who's racist or un uninclusive. It just creates another thing that you have to think about.